When I first heard the news about my diabetes, I think firstly I was in shock. I didn't know how I got it or why I got it. I haven't heard about this diabetes before until I have a, the test and they told me. It's so bad, upset. I feel upset. I was worried for the baby and me. I never expected I will have diabetes. Some women develop diabetes when they are pregnant. It's called gestational diabetes, and it's caused by changes to hormone levels in the body. It usually goes away once the baby is born. How have you been feeling? Feeling good. That's good. Baby's moving well? Yes. I tell my patients that gestational diabetes is more common than we would think, and that it's a condition that's only usually only a temporary thing, and that they will recover after the baby's born, uh, and that as long as we look after them, everything should be fine. The baby will grow well, and the baby will be fine at delivery. That sounds fantastic. Good heartbeat. Mm. And a kick as well. So, what is diabetes? A person has diabetes if the glucose in their blood becomes too high. Let's look at what happens when we eat foods which are high in carbohydrates, such as potatoes, fruit, rice or bread. These foods travel down to the stomach, then the intestine, where they are broken down into sugar or glucose and are absorbed into the bloodstream. There is a natural hormone called insulin, which is produced by the pancreas. It helps the glucose to reach cells all over the body. It also helps to keep the glucose levels normal. In some people, this natural insulin is unable to keep the glucose under control. And when this happens, a person has diabetes. It's very important that women monitor their blood sugars and keep their blood sugars as near to normal as they can get because it means that the baby gets enough to eat and not too much to eat because if the baby gets too much to eat the baby grows too quickly and too big and it makes it harder for the woman to have the baby. When the baby's born too big it means that there is a tendency for it to be overweight as a young baby as a, and as a child and as it grows up it's, it's more inclined to have weight problems in adulthood and it has a, an increased tendency to develop diabetes later in life. You can manage your diabetes when you're pregnant by eating the right food, doing exercise such as walking and monitoring your blood sugars regularly. Sometimes improved diet and walking are not enough. Then you will need to take injections of insulin as well. When you have diabetes during your pregnancy, your diet is one of the most important ways of managing that diabetes because it's food that affects the blood sugar or blood glucose level in your blood and so by changing your diet, that's how you control those blood sugar levels. This afternoon we're going to be talking about the importance of good food and good nutrition during pregnancy. A healthy diet will also ensure you don't gain too much weight and that you have all the right nutrients for you and your baby. Now, if you can see the shape on the table, it's a pyramid shape. It's large at the bottom and small at the top. What that means is that all the foods across the bottom of the pyramid, where it's widest, are the ones we need you to eat more of. And that's because they've got lots of vitamins and minerals, lots of fibre, but they're low in fat and sugar. At the other end of the pyramid, this is the small end, these are the foods that you should eat less of because they're high in fat and sugar. So that includes foods like Coca-Cola and lemonade, jam, lollies, takeaway foods like pizza, um, margarine or the oil that you use in your cooking, and snack foods like chips. The basic principles are quite simple. Eat more fresh fruit and vegetables, whole grain breads, lean meat, fish and low-fat yogurts. These are called low glycemic index foods and release energy more slowly and so help to keep blood sugars under control. Eat less fat. Cut the fat off your meat. Grill your meat and fish rather than frying. 
Avoid eating cream, butter and mayonnaise, takeaway foods, fatty meats, rich cakes and biscuits. Eat less sugar and sweet foods. Put less sugar in your cooking. Only eat small amounts of honey, lollies, soft drinks, flavoured milk, ice cream and desserts. Basically, I follow what the dietitian suggested with her list of food that was recommended. Try to cut down from junk foods and then slowly, slowly I get used to it. I like eat um, jasmine rice every day, but now I have to try some pasta, bread, so it's changing a lot. I eat so much uh, vegetable and um, salad and um, fruit and stop some um, sweets, especially Lebanese sweets. Yeah. Uh, I'm feeling better now. Remember, it is also important to eat regular meals throughout the day. You may need to cut down on portions at mealtimes, and if you're hungry, have a healthy snack between meals. Exercise, such as walking, is also really important for managing gestational diabetes. Daily if possible, or at least two or three times a week. Walking is excellent for pregnant women and will help to keep the blood sugars under control. Careful monitoring every day will help you know if your blood sugars are near normal. Now, uh, Hind, I'm just looking at your book and the results are really good. You've done very well indeed. And how are you going with exercise? Yeah, it's all right. I do exercise every day. Walking helps to bring the blood glucose levels down. It really helps the pancreas to produce more insulin so anyone with diabetes needs to exercise. I advise them to walk at least half an hour every day and make it a brisk walk so that they're actually burning up some calories. Walking. I did a lot of walking. I also took up swimming and I found that helped with the, the blood sugar reading. Even when I used to go shopping, shopping centres, I used to park far from the shopping so I can walk to the shopping. And I feel a lot better after the walk and um, I enjoy it too. Let's just summarise what you need to do. Eat the right foods. Exercise such as walking. Monitor your blood sugars regularly and talk to your family and make sure they understand about your diabetes. Managing your condition will be so much easier with their support. That's your baby. This is your baby's head. What I tell my patients is that we are treating them and we are looking after the baby. By treating the mother, then the baby is looked after and then the baby is healthier at birth. My oh, baby's mouth just moved. Mm -hmm. There's the heartbeat. Well, I'm happy with your baby. It looks nice and healthy, so it's good. I have little girl, and her name is Nicolette. She's a very good baby. She sleeps most of the time, she, she eats well, <laughs> and I'm very lucky to have her. I'm lucky, my mom with me, and um, she helped me with cooking, and uh, sometimes she look after the baby so that I can have plenty of rest. And also, we're not allowed to go outside of the house. We had to stay in the inside for 40 days. My baby, his name is Isa. He's a very healthy boy and a big boy. Uh, in hospital, all uh, visitors come in and tell me, oh, he's a big boy. I'm very happy because he's coming all right and everything normal. Thanks, God. After the baby is born, women are invited to come back and have another glucose tolerance test, or GTT, to see if the diabetes has gone away. I went for the test when my baby was two months and um, 
They rang, they sent me a letter saying my sugar levels were back to normal. I think it was at six weeks, was it? I um, can't recall, that I needed to go back and do the test to make sure um, that um, whether it has developed or not. And it came out, well, good news for me that I was fine and normal. After I had the baby, I mean, two months later, I got tests. And um, the result is saying that I have no diabetes. I feel very happy, very, very happy. Most women who have a normal glucose tolerance test six weeks after the baby's born, uh, and I say to them, that's fantastic, everything is back to normal. But it means that they have to be aware of the fact that they are at risk of developing diabetes later in life. If you've had gestational diabetes, then you have been given a clear sign that there's a chance you will develop diabetes as you get older. But there is a lot you can do to keep healthy, simply by keeping your weight down. And that means eating the right foods and walking. Talk to your family doctor, tell him or her about your diabetes, and make sure you have your follow-up GTT every two years. I got more experience. And um, I don't know, maybe in the, in the future, I might, it might happen again with the second baby. So it's a good thing for me to learn. I learned a lot of stuff that I didn't know, which is good. And now I tell my family members, my, if someone's pregnant, I know my friends, I let them know. It's good for my baby, for his future, to learn how to eat the healthy food. I'm glad that I had it. Um, it's changed my life and it's, it's made me so aware of um, my health and my family's health and um, I'm, I'm sure that I'll live a, a much better life because of it. If you would like to comment on this video or to find out more about diabetes, you can call Diabetes Australia on 1300 136 588.